Yo, 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 what's up all you burner stoners and potheads? This is Weedman420 with the Weedman420 Chronicles. How are all you vipers doing out there, Mrs. Weedman? Mr. Weedman. How the hell are you? Uh, slightly elevated already. A little bit elevated. Yeah. I love it. This I is love take it. two, people. This is take two. So we've already been through half of the show. <laughs> We're a we little baked. start all over. <laughs> but hey, here we you, are. Hey, all you vipers out there. Hopefully you're smoking some big fat doinks while you're listening to the show. We're, we're normal. We're got to about to get even more normal because mm-hmm. uh, we made a little mistake. Mr. Weeman forgot to hit record on the video. and uh, <laughs> But that's okay. We're going to get started anyway. And we're getting started. You know what I'm super stoked about? We got to try it already. We're going to try it a second time. Is There is a new craft grower in the state of Illinois and I'm mm-hmm. super stoked. They are drum roll please. <laughs> Redemption Botanicals and DNA, gen- and DNA Genetics out of Tilton, Illinois. Nice. They're on the uh, on the same over oh, right across the street from Parkway Dispensary down there in Tilton, and I got to go down there a while ago and saw the grow up before in the shell when they were just building it out. Really nice facility, really really nice facility. So welcome to the state of Illinois, Redemption Botanicals and DA Genetics. But we're they gave us two strains to try, and today the first strain we're going to try is DNA Cake. Oof. Which is... I've had some. Yeah, we've had some. And let me tell you, I'm in a much better mood. <laughs> <laughs> it is a gelato sorbet and a cross with lava cake. And I am a huge fan of lava cake. <sighs> it is such a good body high. Such a nice mellow high. And this is a 21 21.54% uh, uh, THC. And it's 2.68% terpenes. Very nice. And when you were rolling this up, Mrs. Weedman, the smell... That was coming when I. Oh, it was so nice, though. It was such a pleasant, aromatic smell. How were the buds when you were grinding them? Sticky. Sticky? Yeah. Fluffy. Colorful, fluffy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. nice. No remediation on that bud that I saw today. When you opened that jar, you could smell it. And then when you when you grind when you were grinding it, I had it was was nice. I was over by you. Fluffy, but but easy to roll. It all sticks together nicely you get that roll together well it was good nice and Burn, the smell burns great the smell was really nice mm-hmm. when you were when you were grinding it up i could smell it's like whoa that is huge and here's why some of the terps that we were smelling in this were b caroline which is that clove peppery mm-hmm. smell and taste yep. limaline a little lemon pledge a little bit a little bit linaloo which comes mm-hmm. from lavender mm-hmm. in right the background right and then a humaline which is comes from hops mm. it's, and hops and cannabis are related mm-hmm. so the tasting notes though on this strain is cheesy little mm-hmm. cheese creamy mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. earthy yes nutty yeah and pungent Pungent. Pungent is, was huge. Yeah, smack like right in the fucking two. old kisser. <laughs> <laughs> Keep coming back for more. And then, wow, that's good. That's really nice. I was enjoying the smell, too. Oh, I am telling you, I have done a, um, a 180 with my attitude. <laughs> I left my attitude back there somewhere. There you go. It was sour. Don't. Let me tell you, when I sat down at this table to so. record this episode, I was I wasn't even salty. So I was sour. sour. So Redemption Botanicals. And right now I'm smiling. Redemption Botanicals so turned that you. frown upside down. Oh, upside down. So thank you. Their effects is body high, mm-hmm. euphoria. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Relaxing. Yeah. Tingly. The, I got the tingles. The tingles are definitely. And happening. I will give this to you right now. And uplifting. uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ready? <sighs> this strain of DNA cake mm-hmm. is best for mm-hmm. anxiety, mm-hmm. chronic pain. I w- my hip. So today, I will say this: I sat a lot today for work. I had a, I was at the computer <laughs> from nine a.m. till five, nonstop. Give me a minute. Um, and uh, my hip. This muscle that goes from my hip down the perf- the perfumerous performerous was hurting so bad today. I stretched, worked out around five o'clock, six o'clock, worked out, stretched the hell out of it, and it was still a little bit like a, a little bit in pain. And I will say this: just took away a little bit of leg pain. That and your new workout machine I used today too, no, and it kind of gave me did? a nice little bounce. How? Yeah. I was just sitting there bouncing on it like you showed me how, just flat feet. <sighs> Up and down. Don't tell the world yet. I'm not ready. Oh, I am. I used it. It was great. My calves were on friggin' fire. I got a rebounder. So so hold on. Let's finish the strain first. Talk. 
So great for chronic pain. So it took mm-hmm. it took my leg, my my muscle, the femoris muscle pain is gone. Okay, depression, mm-hmm. which I would say I was a little depressed today, mm-hmm. and now I'm fucking uplifted and tingly. <laughs> uh, and stress, mm-hmm. all my stress like Calgon take me like, away. I was like this when I sat down. Your like, fists mm. look really big right now. My fists look big. Like you like want to like Tyson somebody right now. <laughs> so here's here's so that that that's what it's best for. They'll be shipping. They'll be shipping the week of the twenty third of this month. Getting into stores by the thirtieth on the shelves ready to Hurry sell. Hurry up, get there. Uh, yeah, by the thirtieth in so early good. October. So and I'm excited because we have a second strain we're going to uh, be smoking <laughs> from the next week. We'll talk about that in the next week's episode. But mm. welcome, Redemption yeah. Botanicals. And DNA genetics. We had a little mishap. I, Mr. Weedman forgot to hit record on <laughs> the camera. So we did record for like already 15 minutes and we were smoking we're for 15 really minutes. And now I'm even double baked. Yes. So DNA genetics, great. redemption botanicals. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, so very much for helping us get stoned. <laughs> we appreciate you throwing us the herb for our show. Mm-hmm. It is. Oh, man, I'm. I'm feeling just right mm-hmm. <laughs> right now. So all you bud tenders out there are going to get samples <laughs> of this. <laughs> Trust me on this one. This is very nice. It is very, very good. Smooth as smooth can be. Very good taste. Very good smell. They're going to make a dent in the world here in Illinois. Yeah, keep Try make, it out. Yeah, keep making Trust me that. on this. DNA cake. Ma, I'm going to sleep wonderful at night when we roll another one up <laughs> after the show. <laughs> so anyway, yes, what did you get? I got to use it today because it's up in my workout area. And I'm like, oh, I was still wa- – I watch anime when I work out. Mm-hmm. You can make fun of me all you want. I watch anime when I work out. I work out for an hour and I catch three shows. It's great. Mm-hmm. So the end of the show didn't happen and I didn't feel like doing steps on up and down the steps. So I said, oh, fuck, your rebounder's right behind me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put it in front of me and just, just – not. I didn't even bounce off of it. I just – that mm-hmm. motion you showed me how to do and just kept on doing it. I did 300 of them. I counted. 300. You feel it. My calves were on friggin' fuego. <laughs> and it was great, though. Mm-hmm. It was wonderful. I had a very good ending workout, cool down, but yes, burn. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So tell them what a rebounder is, Mrs. B. Man. Well, yeah. <laughs> I just knew I had to get my fat ass off of a chair and quit staring at a computer <laughs> and fucking do something because... I was becoming a little pudgy. <laughs> so I found these girls. I kept trying to fit. I joined the gym. I was like, ah, I don't like the gym anymore. I like yoga, but class schedules are prohib- like, it's just difficult with my work schedule. Da, 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 da. I, had to, I had an excuse for everything. <laughs> I had every excuse. Ugh. So between my excuses, my funky brain due to my medical condition and my stage of life and what I yada yada yada. I'm just, you know, I got some, I got some cloudiness in the uh, forecast. And uh, <laughs> what a chance of meatballs! <laughs> sure, meatballs. That's right. A whole plate of mushy meatballs. <laughs> that's how my brain feels. But I. <laughs> need to exercise. I need to do something. So I got a rebound. I find these girls. And I'm like, you know what? This is something I can do. So it's a rebounder because I needed something cardiovascular. I needed something movement and engaging and fast. Like boom, 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 boom. I wanted to be like 20 minute workouts, even if I did it a couple times a day. So this rebounder is like those little mini trampolines of mm-hmm. the 80s. And they have a bar. They encourage you to buy this bar because it helps you do other exercises. And you can literally do head to toe exercises, engaging multiple, multiple like regions and muscle groups and fine motor muscles. And like, it's very, it's very interesting. It helps with lymphatic drainage. It helps with digestion. It helps with all of these other things, but also with uh, some weight mass, but a lot of, um, or I'm sorry, muscle mass, but a lot of muscle definition because it, you get those real striated, kind of uh, ballerina elongated muscles. It's just they're just it's and it's these motions that are really good on your joints. And I have all this joint pain right now, so I got my rebounder, but I haven't used it yet. But Mr. Weedman did. 
I am. We're getting. I don't care if we you're just going to use like, it. I'm going to use it because I doing, like it. <laughs> well, we're doing some rearranging I in the it. house. It was great. And I needed it to get situated. You could just, you know, it's just more excuses. It's an excuse. I know. Fucking I know, excuse. Know. You know Shut what? Up. It was Shut behind up. me. Shut up. I'm going to get crabby again. It was behind me. Shut up. I'm up. I was, you went on it. I, it was behind me. I wanted to finish the last 15 minutes I've of watching the show. I on it. I did it. 300. Pew, 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 pew. And I wasn't even going that fast. I was just nice. Nice yeah. pace. Just had a good rhythm. 300 right. of them. Bang. Calves. Boom. Calves were just going to go. Pow. pow just like. Pow. Pow, 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 it's just going to go good. Yeah. So oh. I liked it. It was great. You should just do it. Get up in the morning and do it tomorrow do before it. you leave the house. Just do it. Stop making fucking excuses. I know, right? <laughs> You've been wanting it's this so thing for months. Dumb. Oh, I know. <laughs> So That's it's okay. So, why do we do these things because for ourselves? It's gonna get used. It's like self sabotage. I'm gonna use it. So regardless whether mm. you use it or not, why? thanks for the new workout machine. <laughs> why, when we're smart enough to know better, do we not do better? The fuck? Thank you for the new workout machine. Like, I just, Pow! I'm so comfortable in the struggle, man. I just need to get out of that. That's what you like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm going to, I'll have a story for you next week about my jumping. I'm psyched. I'm going to get lean and mean. A fighting machine. Thanks for redemption. <laughs> Botanicals for getting Mrs. Weeman in a better <laughs> fucking mood. Because <laughs> this is going to be a fun show. <laughs> I'm glad we had a restart. Mm. <laughs> refresh and restart or restart yeah. and refresh. Um, <laughs> How it all came. of it. All of but it. But I wanted to talk about something. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about. What did little... we just talk about for so long? We talked a lot. We did. So. Go ahead. Let's talk, talk about more. social media. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. <laughs> the nemesis. Let's talk about, Ugh. especially one in particular, because it, it, it's destroyed a lot of good accounts and a lot of good peeps and a lot of good people in the cannabis com community. Oh, such a bitch. Instagram has destroyed so many Fucking good people. bitch. Myself Instagram. included. I lost an account. Couldn't get it back. Mm. Now I'm so shadow banned. I can't. When you type in... we Okay, so here's the crazy thing. So before I even go into... I was... I was talking to somebody on Monday night and I said, oh, we're not friends on Instagram. He's like, oh, we're not. I said, do me a favor. Go on. Just type in weed man 420. He typed in weed and didn't even, nothing came nothing. up. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. They just banned the word. Nothing. He was typing at weed, not even weed man for, he didn't even get there. I'm just like, weed. I'm like, do you notice that nothing with no, nothing, nothing populates. that's it, populated with weed? He's like, that's crazy. I said, and I really didn't notice, but I noticed a lot of friends losing their accounts the last yeah. like. 10 days, yeah. like eight people that had really good accounts and really good content, totally crushed. Hmm. And uh, I, I, I'm upset because we as the cannabis community, there's millions of us on there, whether you're just a smoker, toker, breeder, grower, influencer, podcaster, a brand, like eight decades and many other just someone that likes to just share moments smoking weed somewhere or uh, somebody that does reviews, whatever. There's a lot of us on there. Dispensary owners, dispensaries, cultivation, brands across the globe are on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And we get fucking so beat up. Mm -hmm. Non-followers never seeing us. It takes us forever to build a following. People mm -hmm. have to share I mean, I had 6,000 followers, 7,000 followers on the last account that I oh, lost. Oh, I can't even get past 900. I got to nine, nine, what was I at? Like 995, and then I hovered. It was like 998, and then they'd take me down to 993. And I, I don't usually lose anybody. And I just keep, like, it just doesn't want me to get past that 900. So now I think it has me down. You were down like, like, like 898 or, or something like right. that. I was like, come on, this is fucking bullshit. But it just... It's just terrible that gotta, when, when we we uh, yeah. keep on going back. I know because it is the biggest it is. network. But of we keep on going industry. back to it though. I know. We we, we get shadow banned. We get beat. We get and I don't even have the answer. I don't no. have an answer. No. All I'm saying is we are fools to keep on being fooled. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm myself included. I, I'm so over it. And all it's fun because I get to see people in our community. That's the only people that sees my stuff, and that's probably I'm probably right. the only stuff that you know they have their followers. But we as a community is, is is so beat up. We've been beat up on everything, and it's legal in fucking all these states. And just because it's not federally legal, you got two people running for president. 
that are now so for cannabis. Yeah. Instagram, social media, just fucking now they're let, paying celebrities to, right. to put out. Just let it go. Yeah. And here's the other thing. You are hypocritical too, Instagram. And here's why. Mm -hmm. You let and I'm not being a rat. No. I'm being it yeah. has to be fair on a fair playing field. Because if I can't post fucking something about cannabis and I'm uh, they're trying to mm -hmm. they're trying to I do a Sunday morning sesh. I don't even smoke anymore. I throw a positive message out every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Cup of coffee, doink in the head. Everybody go out there and live your life and have some fucking fun. That's my message every Sunday to everybody because everybody mm -hmm. should. It, it had, I'm not even saying on Sunday. If it's not your day, fine. Pick a day and do it. Right. You know? And they're now – I had to delete all of them because it it, they're going to – they won't show it to anybody. There's – or they're going to delete – they're like – They're just going to stop your – Right. <laughs> so I had to delete all those. <clears throat> I'm back to where I was. They actually want me to change my name. That's the last thing it says on the activity part. It says that still has a red exclamation right. part something about editing your profile what am i gonna edit my my thing says at weed man 420 chronicles 2.0 you right. want me to take weed out that's what it is mm -hmm. and i refuse to do it right. and i swear if i lose this account i will never fucking go back on instagram again mm -hmm. never i don't give a fuck i'll have my boot loves weed one but i will never start another weed man 420 chronicles one and i'll probably hardly ever grow on mm -hmm. i have the grow hour too so at the grow hour which i don't post anything right and I got some people that joined on there. And I, the only thing I post is one story when I do an episode. I don't post anything on, on anything about that account. Hmm. That account you can find right away. That account I'll never lose. But hmm. I'll never start another Weedman 420 Chronicles. I just won't do it. Or maybe just do it and not even start one up. I'm just so upset that they're asking me to take off a positive message. Right. And I don't even talk about weed. Right. I say doink and I'm not even smoking it. Right. And I can't even put a reel on there. They're blocking him now. It's fucking brutal. That's crazy. So now I'm just back to now just doing stories and putting pictures of Yuki on on, yeah. on a reel. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. But they'll probably ban that too because my name says Weed Man Weed 420 Man. Chronicles. It's just horseshit. Such And we, we keep on going back to that. Yeah, we need a solution. I don't know who has it. Do we all just jump on Twitter and say, fuck that, or whatever the fuck it's called now, X, or is there another social media platform we can go on? But no one's going to go on it because everybody likes TikTok and mm -hmm. everybody likes Instagram. We're all fucking We're just blah, those, you know, dialed into it. Facebook here and there. You go on fucking Snap here and there, some of the, the, the other platforms, but I don't go on them all the time. I don't even post anything. I go to see other friends who I may not have in other social media because they don't use that one because they don't like that one, you know? Right. So it's just, it's just foolish. It's so foolish that we let... Somebody that doesn't even want us. They don't even want us on their platform, but we all go back. Hmm. But if we all left, because you have all now these big cannabis companies, right. big hemp Facebook cannabis, is more hemp friendly. cannabis companies. Facebook is more friendly to oh, cannabis. Yeah. Oh, Why yeah. don't we all just shift over to Facebook? Because nobody likes Facebook anymore. I don't know, but... If they let us, if but, it allows but I, us to right. expand our I know you can platform, go on LinkedIn, but fucking LinkedIn, ugh. Ugh. it's just ugh. good for one thing ugh. only, and that's finding a job. <laughs> you know, that's it. It's the only time I ever go on LinkedIn if I find a job or if I just, you it's know, just a bunch of cheerleading. It's just, it's, it's, you did a good job. It's, You're amazing. It's just another platform, you know. You're next level. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> so it's just a conversation that I, I, I know we all need it or don't we need it. I don't know. I just fucking hate it because it just bleeds me dry that I can't post something positive. And I was going to be fucking bad. I'll do this in the algorithm. I'll move up in the fucking thing or pay me to fucking move you up in the numbers. I'll, I'll get you 25,000 followers for $5 a follow. Like, oh go fuck yourself. The thousand people I have on there are people that I met personally or someone I knew along the way or somebody I met through somebody, I think that's more personal than having 5 million people I don't even fucking know. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. If I get to 10,000 people that I've actually met or I met through somebody and they fucking shouted out and said hello to me, I'll follow, I'll follow. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. I don't, I ain't looking to be some fucking influencer. I got to post every five minutes of my life on there. I just like it because it's fun. And I talk to people. Right. I have chats, you know, I have a fucking group, the Vipers. You know, we all go on and we talk about growing and we get left alone. It's mm -hmm. just like 25, 30 people. And I always tell people, if you want to come on the Vipers channel, let me know. Just friend me on fucking Instagram and join our channel. You'll learn a lot. That's the stuff I like about. Yeah. Community. Yeah. 
some of this shit is just just makes me want to fucking vomit that we all spend so much of it is just impersonal and really it's all like everybody left facebook because of the ads what do you think instagram is oh my is? gosh the whole Instagram thing is one is big a ad. Fucking commercial. It's, it's one commercial. It's every, the only way to get <laughs> a plat, like to be famous on Instagram, is to have sponsorship and right. have have all of these collaborations with companies. Right. All the person is doing is advertising, advertising. in their cute little picture mm. and their truck on the beach. Da, 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 you know, right? Like hover over it. Oh, gee, the bathing suit link. Oh, right. gee, the Jeep link. Oh, gee, the dog link. You know, like. But yeah. we all go oh, on. Oh, the and dog use it. has its own personality, we and all... then he's advertising the leash and the ball, and yeah. We all go on and use it, right? And we're all suckered into suckers. all of it. I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm one in of the too. suckers. Right. I'm one of the suckers. So I I'm hate not. It. I just. It just. There's more to life than Instagram, and if they don't want us, why do we? Keep, the question is, why do we keep on going back? Yeah. It's just like when I said when I said a long time ago, like. We form the biggest union in the world. You know, if all the cannabis workers and employees and owners form the union. You'd be the most powerful union in the world in a fucking couple of years because you're going to have a million people working in the industry. And you'd be the most powerful union in the world. You can control mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. That's a lot of votes, too, that some kind of government bureaucrat would try to, like, lobby. Like, right now, they're lobbying to who's going to win the Teamsters vote, right? Mm-hmm. Well, just think if you had a million voters, you could change fucking – you can change a fucking election. If you became one, think about it. Mm-hmm. And also the same thing on Instagram. There's probably a hundred million fucking cannabis fucking burner stoners and potheads, maybe more. I have an idea. I couldn't even tell you. Don't write it down. <laughs> Don't write it <laughs> no, down? No, write it down. Don't say it out loud. Yeah. Write it down. Uh, Excuse but me for I, a minute. I'm just telling you all that we keep on using stuff that doesn't want us. That's just what I what, how I mm-hmm. feel lately. Because, like I said, I've seen a lot of good people lose a lot of good accounts that aren't doing anything wrong. Totally. They're not on there fucking showing their tits and ass and and dicks and balls all over the place. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're not flashing and doing stupid stuff to catch you to click on so you can go to their whatever page and watch what they do. Right. It's someone fucking smoking a plant. Or eating an edible. Or hanging out and having a good time. You see some people getting shot in wars on Instagram. They don't block that. Mm -hmm. You know, goes against my user guidelines, my ass. So you ready to move on? Enough, enough negativity. Just remember, everybody, be you out there. Don't let fucking social media ruin your your life. That's it. And it does us all, even Mr. Wee Mims included. So Boomer, which we are not, and Gen Z... Consume marijuana for similar reasons. Hmm. Cannabis has become popular for every adult age group, but the surprise is Gen Z and boomers are using it for similar reasons. Cannabis is fully legal to over 50% of the population and all groups are embracing its use. Proven healthier than alcohol has become much more common in all sets. Even Florida looks like it may possibly go to the vote for recreational cannabis. Long stigmatized as a way to get high, be lazy, and lay out about in the couch. It turns out it has it turns out it has become part of the everyday life and part of a healthy regimen. An example of how it's being used: Boomer and Gen Z consume marijuana for the similar reasons. It it is become so accepted. The AARP. If you don't know, youngins know what that is. That's for older people. They get this card and they get a bunch of free shit. By paying into it, and they get a bunch of coupons and road and roadside assistance and all that stuff. It's good, you know. Uh, I did a study about uh, use among boomers. AARP is the largest print magazine with 38 million <clears throat> readers, mostly boomers, and their bulletin has uh, 33 million. A huge validator for the demographic. It is also shows that they're more open to more mainstream cannabis. This falls in line by positions of the American Medical Association and the American College of Physicians. The AARP study revealed 21% ages 50 plus used some form of cannabis, be it food, drink, flour, or another type, at least once in the last year. A report from the University of Michigan's National Poll of Health and Aging found that up to 1 in 8, that's 12% in 2021, in 2015 and 2016, roughly 3% of adults 65 and older used cannabis, according to research published in JAMA International Medicine. Don't forget, I think I've said this before, the fastest growing 
group age group using cannabis now is six, 58 and up. So fastest growing, going back to their roots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Roughly 68% of the poll respondents who used cannabis products did so f- to help with sleep. The research found. We use it for sleep. I mm-hmm. love weed for sleep. Many also cited pain relief, 63%. Mental health, anxiety, and mood, 53%. And relaxation was 81%. Everybody, mm-hmm. we just talked about it on a couple mm-hmm. episodes ago that people use cannabis for relaxation. It mm-hmm. just, I love it, right? How do you feel now if you smoke some uh, of that redemption, yeah. that redemption botanicals? <laughs> I feel redeemed. <laughs> 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 so and we're pretty high because we were mm-hmm. so remember everybody i'm pretty fucking stoned right now because we started the show mr Weeman man screwed up i wind up forgetting to turn the video on so we had to start over mm-hmm. and now we smoked more and we were re- we we were banging that fucking Shit. thing out yeah. when we did the first mm-hmm. recording that we had to delete and we like hit the hell out of that yeah. thing <laughs> we did. you got a permanent smile on your face right now <laughs> uh <laughs> What's interesting is Gen Z, the youngest adult generation, Gen Z is also a big fan of marijuana. They help fuel the California sober trend where you reduce or stop drinking and use weed instead. One reason Gen Z embraced weed is it helps with anxiety and mood. They also use it for relaxation. Everybody uses weed for relaxation. It's good for my glaucoma too. Uh, Way more so than other generations (laughs) who tend to lean into alcohol. What is interesting is because some boomers and Gen X are consuming marijuana traditional, more traditional way by smoking. Gen X and boomers n- new to consuming tend to vape and use gummies. Interesting. The later the two are more on the go and discreet and doesn't have it, the smell. It is interesting that marijuana is bonding together two generations. Of course, I, I, I've said how I've said this like probably episode one mm-hmm. that weed brings people together socially. It makes people feel comfortable around one another. Oh, you smoke weed? I smoke weed. Let's smoke. Oh, I feel great. Hey, how you doing? Ba 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 ba. You get in a good routine, right? But it's crazy that, you know, you see just the older generation. They like they like their gummies. Mm-hmm. Fucking, I mean, the boomers, gummies <laughs> to the core. They are gummy fiends. You know, they mm-hmm. love their gummies. Back when they used to blast us as kids for eat, smoking weed, and now they're fucking back into what they were doing. They just now they're retiring, or they're just like, "Hey, I'm 65 years old. Fuck it. I'm, I don't want to drink anymore. It makes me feel like shit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna eat a fucking gummy and go play some golf, and I feel no pain while I eat a gummy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I feel good on that course. That bo- that ball sails. <laughs> so it's interesting though to see that the everything t- coming full circle with cannabis, and like I said, Instagram. Boomers are doing it. It must be cool. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Medical marijuana helps people with arthritis and rheumatoid and other rheumatoid conditions, reduces use of opioids and other medications. This study shows, Mrs. Yeah. Weed, man. You ready to go? I'm ready. You got this? I'm as ready as ever. Let's do it. Yes. New research on the use of medical marijuana among people with rheumatic conditions such as arthritis finds that more than 6 in 10 patients who used medical cannabis reported substituting it for other medications, including NSAIDs, opioids, sleep aids, and muscle relaxants. Relaxants. Yeah. (laughs) Most patients further said that the use of marijuana allowed them to reduce or stop using those medications entirely. The primary reason for substitution were fewer adverse effects, better symptom management, and concerns about withdrawal symptoms, says the study, published this month by the American College of Rheumatology. Substitution was associated with THC use and significantly higher symptom improvements in pain, sleep, anxiety, and joint stiffness versus non-substitution. The findings, say authors at the University of Michigan Medical School, McGill University, and the University of Buffalo, suggest that an appreciable number of people with rheumatic diseases substitute medications with medical cannabis for symptom management. That's huge. Data for the study came from an online anonymous survey of adult residents of the United States and Canada, which was advertised on social media and through email contact lists of the Arthritis Foundation and Arthritis Society Canada. Of the 1,727 completed surveys, 763 respondents said they currently used cannabis, 
while 655 said they never used cannabis and 268 said they used but had since discontinued. Researchers analyzed responses of only those who said they were current cannabis users. Among 763 participants, 62.5% reported substituting medical cannabis products for medications, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, opioids, sleep aids, and muscle relaxants. Relaxants, I yeah, said. I did. I, <laughs> the report says, among cannabis users, about two thirds reported a di a diagnosis of an inflammatory rheumatic disease, and a similar number reported related conditions such as fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, and mechanical spinal pain. Researchers noted that among respondents who used cannabis. Inhalation was the most common method of administration, with all the attendant risks of respiratory disease and aggravation of an inflammatory condition. However, given the immediate pharmacokinetic effect of inhaled cannabis, this administration method may be most satisfactory for people seeking rapid symptom relief, especially for pain. They also noted that THC-containing products were the mostly, most commonly used, writing that it's plausible that some individuals may require cannabis products containing at least some THC for effective pain management, a point that should be explored in future studies. Another finding was that more than half of participants in the survey were using cannabis at least daily, with those substituting more likely to be using it regularly. This pattern of use, wrote the authors, supports the notion of daily continuous symptoms that need continuous management. The study notes that so far, only a handful of observational studies have investigated cannabis use among people with rheumatic conditions, a group that may have unique challenges owning to age, substantial use of related medications, and high symptom burden. Nevertheless, more and more research suggests that some patients with a variety of conditions use medical cannabis as a substitute for other medications. A recent study in the Journal of Nurse Practitioners, for example, found that medical cannabis was associated with reduced prescription drug use and improved well-being and symptom intensity among adults with anxiety, depression, insomnia, and chronic pain. Prescription medication use decreased significantly after medical cannabis use, that report said. Health characteristics and symptoms intensity improved significantly after medical cannabis use. A separate study of more than 500 military veterans published last year found that more than 90% who used medical cannabis said that it improved their quality of life. Many also reported using cannabis as an alternative to over-the-counter and prescription medications. Other research published this year found that older people who use medical cannabis experience considerable improvement in health and well-being, and that access to cannabis moderately reduced opioid prescriptions, a result indicated by several other studies in recent years. An earlier and earlier this summer, a new federally funded study found that cannabis helps people with substance misuse disorders stay off of opioids or reduce their use, maintain treatment, and manage their withdrawal symptoms. Anecdotally, pet owners have also been using can cannabinoids for years to treat rheumatic conditions like osteoarthritis in dogs. Yes. Yes. It's good that we're getting more and more research done, mm -hmm. you know, finding out more. Yeah. I'm stalling a little bit. Yeah, are you all right? Yeah, I'm stalling, but I have a very long article. So oh, I'm you got to take a break. Just need a sec. Drink, have just a little drink a of water. Little, little drink. Drink, drink. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Salute. It's a mm -hmm. long one. So <laughs> stick with me, everybody. This is, all right. this is a good one, though. It's going to make you think. Okay. Marijuana is too strong now. As weed has become easier to obtain, it has become harder to smoke. For some, but not for others. Hmm. A strange thing has happened on the path to marijuana legalization. Users across all ages and experience levels are noticing that cannabis they once turned to for fun and relaxation now triggers existential dread and paranoia. Hmm. For some. The density of the nugs is crazy. They're so sticky. A friend from college texted me recently. 
I soloed a joint from the dispensary recently and was tweaking just walking around. Translation <laughs> for the non pot savvy this strain of marijuana is not for amateurs. <laughs> yeah. In 2022, the federal government reported that uh, in samples seized by the F Drug Enforcement Administration, average levels of THC, the psychoactive compound of weed that makes you feel high, has more than tripled compared to with 25 years earlier from 5 to 16%. That may understate how strong weed has gotten. Walk into a dispensary in the, count, in the country, legal or not, and you'll be hard-pressed to find a single product advertising such a low THC level. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that. What have I said? I said, yeah. please get me 14%, mm -hmm. like for the daytime, yeah. 13 12%. I don't need no 30%. You don't need like a knockout. I like, like this yeah. one right now is 22%. It's great. Right. I love that for nighttime. Like it would be nice to be able to smoke a whole joint and not feel completely blitzed. Just blazed. Yeah. yeah. Um, that may understate how strong weed has gotten. Walk into any dispensary, like I said, and uh, it's hard pressed to find a single product advertising such low THC levels. Most strains claim to be at least 20 to 30 percent THC by weight. Concentrated weed products designed for vaping can be labeled as up to over 90 percent. Right. Wow. For the average weed smoker who wants to take a few hits without getting absolutely blitzed, this is frustrating. For some, it can be dangerous. In the past few years, reports have swelled of people, especially teens, experiencing short-term and long-term marijuana-induced psychosis, with consequences including hospitalizations for chronic vomiting and auditory hallucinations of talking birds. <laughs> people studies have drawn a link between heavy use of high-potency marijuana, in particular in the development of psychological disorders, including schizophrenia, although a casual connection hasn't been proven yet. Hmm. So before I move on, I've said it in past episodes. There's a lot of new users. And if they're starting off with a medicine that's 25, 30% or infused joints that are 44 to 60% mm -hmm. or a donut hash hole that could be that high, which is a beautiful thing. Even for, one hit could knock them out. They're not understanding yeah. it. They're not being yeah. educated enough. Or they take a 25 milligram edible right. that their friend made. Their or, friend went to the dispensary yeah. and got, oh man, I got this great weed. I went to the dispensary and bought some. They, most of the time, most of these people aren't even talking about THC percentage. Mm -hmm. You just smoke it. Or a dose. Right. If it's an edible. Right. right? They're just consuming. They're just eating it. Right. There a lot of people. There's some educated people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of uneducated <clears throat> people. Like someone would be very easily told to go, like if they saw the candy was five milligrams and they said to their friend, like, how much should I take? And the friend's like, oh, I eat like four of them. Have a few. Done. Right? Then the, that person's New user. Done. Right. They're never going to use weed yeah. again. They're they going to throw it. up it like terrible. fucking crazy. Yeah. I'll never do edibles again. I had the worst experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that weed has... It, it, weed, for some people, weed needs to be tw in the 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. You know? Some, of them, some people have been smoking so long. And some people need it medically. But for the new consumer that we want to come and enjoy cannabis that are leaving alcohol or have never tried alcohol, but they've always wanted to try weed because they've heard nothing but good things about it. We have to be better as a community to make sure when we meet a newbie, mm -hmm. somebody that's new to cannabis, somebody that ha has always wanted to, or even young people that are experimenting with cannabis in high school, there's still some that do. If they're not used to it, it's going to ruin them. Mm -hmm. And they can get sick because it's it's just like over-consuming too much alcohol. You're not going to die. You're not going to not like alcohol because al alcohol, you could die and end up. In the right. Hospital, but I'm but, saying you're not going to die right. from overconsumption of weed. But you're going to get a headache or you're mm -hmm. going to vomit or you're going to be sick yeah. for some. You have the spins. You have the spins. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the first time you got drunk, right. really drunk, and you had the head spins and you're vomiting all over the place. You didn't die. Mm -hmm. You could have fucked up and may maybe, but you had your first drunken experience and it was awful. Mm -hmm. You know, weed. If you're if you smoked with somebody that's a twenty eight percent, thirty two percent, maybe it fucking infused with distillate or or keef, and it's their first time smoking, you're gonna ruin them. Always ask. Mm -hmm. We have to be better than that. People working in the industry need to ask people: Are you an experienced cannabis user? No, I do it socially or on occasion. Okay, here's a fourteen percent joint that's gonna be perfect for you. A lot more flavor. It's gonna do you good. Are you smoking with people? Yes. Okay, this is going to be perfect for the group. Here's two because you might need some in a couple hours later. You know, you, you feel mm -hmm. me? So 
I'll move on. One of the basic premises of legalization movement in marijuana, if not harmless, is pretty close to it. Arguably much less dangerous than alcohol, but much of the wheat being sold today is not the same stuff that people were getting locked up for and selling in the 90s and 2000s and 80s and 70s and 60s. You don't have to be a war on drugs apologist to be worried about the consequences of unleashing so much super high potency weed into the world. I know higher potency brings in more money. I get it. I understand. But you can always sell volume too and sell lower, Mm -hmm. you know. The high that most adult weed smokers remember from their teenage years is most likely produced by mids, is which is the middle tier weed, uh, in the pre legalization area era, unless you had a connection with access to top shelf strains. You probably had a little. You had to settle for mids, or what I was when I got weed for a while was what we called red reggies, red reggies, regs, regulars, regular weed. Just basic. Just. You, you got a stoned. You yeah. got to smoke a couple of joints with some people. You got high. Didn't taste good. Right. But it got you high. It had smell. It smelled skunky as fuck, you know, <laughs> but it wasn't great. You know, the compared to the weed we're smoking now, you know, <laughs> been stepped on two, three times, you know, <laughs> uh, most of the time today, mids are hard to come by though. I, uh, I would like some, if I can get some of those old Mexican regs that I, that I love so much, uh, <laughs> some of that seeds, I would love to like have a garden of just that stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would like die to have some of those seeds from back then. I'll have seedy weed. <laughs> uh, the simplest explanation for this is that the casual smokers who uh, pine for the mids and reggies of their youth aren't the industry's top customers. Serious stoners are. According to research by Jonathan P. Coughlin, a public policy professor of Carnegie Mellon, people who support smoking more than 25 times a month make up the third of the marijuana users, but account for about two thirds of all marijuana consumption. Such regular users tend to develop a high tolerance and their taste drive the industry's cultivation decisions. The industry is not shy about this fact. In May, I attended the National Cannabis Investment Summit in Washington, D.C. as a journalist, where investors use the terms high quality and potent almost interchangeably. They told me that the high THC percentages, oops, sorry about that, the high THC percentages do well with heavy users. The dedicated wake and bakers and the joint before bed crowd, 30% THC the new 20, is the new 20%. Oof. Ryan Cohen, a Michigan-based cultivator, told this writer, Our target buyer is the guy who just worked 40 hours a week and wants to get high as fuck on a budget. Smaller producers might conceivably carve out a niche catering to those who use, who prefer a milder high. But because of the way the legal weed market has developed, they're struggling just to exist. I would like to just open up a small little apothecary that I can smoke, that I can sell weed out of, and it's low dosed flour from like 16 percent down mm-hmm. and, it, and have people come and understand weed and get the new consumer to understand and then when they graduate they go to the dispensary or they go you know grow their own you know whatever but i would that i'd love to do that you know just to get people to understand you know hey it's not all about that 30 percent it's mm-hmm. about taste and quality and 14 percent right. will still get you high <laughs> you know um so that uh where are we here we go across the country MSOs are buying up licenses, acquiring smaller brands, and lobbying politicians to stick prohibition on, on home grow into their legalization bills. Fight for home grow, everybody. Don't let that state do it, not do it for you. The result is an illusion of endless choice and the difficult of climate for the little guy. Minnesota's 15 medical dispensaries are owned by two MSOs. All 23 of Virginia's are owned by three different MSOs. Some states have tried to lower barriers to entry, but the big chains still tend to overpower the market. Notable exceptions are California and Colorado, which have a longer history with legal cannabis licensing and where the markets are less dominant by mega chains. Despite the provisions of stores in some states and the apparent variety of strains on the shelf, most people who walk into a dispensary will choose from a limited number of suppliers that maximize for THC percentage. Give me a sec. Marijuana is still... Uh, under the Federal Controlled Substance Act, states have been allowed to do their own thing, but the lack of federal legalization has meant a lack of federal regulation. Uh, in May, a Department of Justice official proposed rescheduling marijuana to Schedule 1 under the CSA, where heroin is, to Schedule 3, where ketamine and anabolic steroids are. 
That change, if it happens, will dramatically expand medical marijuana research and access, but won't affect the recreational market at all. If the incentives of the market point are even higher, concentrations of THC, one path to milder varieties would be the government regulation. But legal weed exists largely in regulatory vacuum. Six years ago, uh, the colleagues of this writer observed that the lack of federal involvement in legalization has meant that marijuana products are not being safety tested like pharmaceuticals, measured and dosed like food products, subjected to agricultural safety and pesticide standards like crops, and held to labeling standards like alcohol. Very little has changed since this writer uh, wrote this. Some states have limited THC percentages for serving for edibles, but the Vermont and Connecticut have potency caps on so-called flour, meaning the old-fashioned kind of weed that you smoke in leaf form. And that's when the Wild West of legal hemp-derived THC products, which functionally has no potency limits at all. So such a charge uh, would ideally allow the federal government, or particularly the Food and Drug Administration, the power to regulate marijuana in the same way they regulate other uncontrolled substances, such as alcohol and tobacco. By overseeing packaging, advertising, and distribution, sellers could be required to create a clear standardization nutrition fact-style label that indicates true THC percentages. Recommended dosages and professional suggestions for what to do in the case of a bad high. A full descheduling would also shorten the research knowledge gap, because private marijuana companies could run FDA-approved tests on their products and develop modern regulatory strategies and align with public health officials and standards. The history of the drug enforcement in America was one of long of discriminatory draconian enforcement, but the shift toward legal weed has tracked too far in the opposite direction. If the marijuana is to be sold legally, consumers should know what they are buying and have confidence that someone is making sure it is safe. If we can agree on society that's get, getting high on weed shouldn't be illegal, we can also agree that smoking weed shouldn't involve disassociating at a house party or running into the middle of the snowstorm because you think imaginary bad guys are after you. <laughs> the sad irony of legalization is that as weed has become easier to obtain, has become harder to smoke for some, but not for others. It, it made sense. Mm -hmm. And it, it needs to be talked about. You know, and you, you, Some people might not like it, what that writer wrote. But I agree. I agree in some ways. It's a ways we want everyone to enjoy cannabis. We don't want people to have bad experiences on it. We want them to understand it and learn and be educated about it. And that's us better listening to podcasts, reading, reading, going to events, talking to your bud tenders, talking to the brand ambassadors, people in the industry, getting to know cannabis. If you want to come in and start enjoying it, just like it's just we want to do it more than just once a year kind of thing, you know, or you want to do it every day or you want to do it more, you know, just you got to you got to learn about it. Just like be educated. Mm -hmm. So latest cannabis challenge throws convention out the window. Tell us about him as we man. Oh, yeah. There's no <laughs> doubt that smoking anything has risks, cannabis included. However, certain steps can help mitigate the hazards and potentially enhance your experience at the same time. As a heavy cannabis consumer, I've been smoking flour multiple times a day for years. While I've thankfully avoided any physical problems thus far, I will admit that weed has been hitting differently. Uh, I've always been an anxious person, but lately things have been out of control. Many times smoking or dabbing triggers a panic attack. It's a frustrating thing, not to mention uncomfortable. When I heard that Dry Herb Vaporizer brand Stores and Bickle was launching a smokeless September challenge to measure the benefits of their wares, I was intrigued. The documented health risks associated with smoking weed, particularly those related to anxiety and mental health, are some of the main drivers of the campaign. I've tried many dry herb vapes in my time, but now there was a real purpose. As a physician and harm reduction advocate, my goal is to help people consume in the safest way possible, said Princeton-based psychiatrist Dr. David Nathan in a press release from Stores and Bickle. Inhalation of dry herb flour allows for the fastest absorption of cannabinoids, enabling consumers to quickly and efficiently reach their optimal intake without overdoing it. The concept of being able to enjoy cannabis without getting too high and potentially going into a spiral drew me in. Back in the day, I pretty much only consumed cannabis using my volcano, and I felt great. Perhaps taking a combustion break would be an interesting experiment in my new hyper-anxious reality. 
Stores and Bickle are working with several cannabis influencers. Several. A lot. <laughs> on the Smokeless September campaign. Yes, they are. I, I am not one of them. But I decided to play along since I'm legitimately interested in how many may or I'm sorry, and how this may or may not help me. I also knew I couldn't commit to an entire month of only hitting a volcano or handheld venti, but a week of vaping only would probably work. It's very possible that switching to a dry herb vape won't make any difference in my paranoia, but at this point, I'm willing to try anything. And either way, I'm sure my lungs will appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... yeah, we have seen oh, yeah. over like, oh, the last oh, week gosh, or so. so yeah. many. They're either yeah. using the volcano or yes. they're using the little handheld the little papers. And I've been wanting to buy one for a while <laughs> yeah. because I want to keep one up by, by our venti. bed. Yeah. yeah, up by our bed. So, um, but I love our volcano. Mm -hmm. I take it with us on every mm -hmm. event. People get to try a volcano. They're great. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are so much fun. Ba doing bags are great. And you really get a really true taste of, of flour. Mm -hmm. Like what, I mean, especially if you do low heat and you're just burning for terpenes and not mm -hmm. really burning for the THC to get high off of, you really burn it low. Burn like, like look at six. what. Around six. six no, I would half. even go even lower. Yeah. Yeah. If you just want to taste more terps, I would go like 300. Mm. You know, because you're just some terps burn at like 180 to 220. Right. You know, so you want to get a little high, you know, but mm -hmm. usually when we're doing our events, I usually keep it around 556 because I want people to really take, I want people to taste the flower. And I, like I said, they, I always tell people, I'm like, you're going to get high, but you're, this is not meant for you to get like, right. like faded. Wacky. Yeah. Right. This is meant for you to trace, to taste the, two, the true form of cannabis. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's been, it's been great to see people doing, doing the dry, the September. September vape, whatever, mm. you know, September smokeless, smokeless September, right? <laughs> yes, that's uh, it. <laughs> sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> you, <got laughs> you know, it. <laughs> uh, but it, it's good to people to see to try, to try it out and see if, you know, a month is a long time, especially mm -hmm. if you're an everyday fucking rocker, you know, mm -hmm. and you're just burning dubs all day, you know, I mean, that's tough to switch and go right to a fucking vape. You're fucking, we're going to carry that fucking five pound volcano with you everywhere you go in your <laughs> car. You're going to hook it up into your, into your cigarette lighter, fucking <laughs> doing bags. Out the fucking window and shit. You know, I know it's a little handheld, but right. some people got the volcano instead. They might not have got both. So if you want to fly, if you're an everyday smoker and you smoke while you're driving, fucking people will be watching you fucking blowing bags out the <laughs> <laughs> fucking the Ryan. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> oh shit. No, but I do I do enjoy a good volcano bag. They're fun. Yeah. They're really fun. So uh testing, cannabis testing. It, yeah. we've read articles about testing and we've read articles about bad testing and companies. We've, t we actually had a company on very, very early in our cannabis, in our uh, podcasting mm -hmm. days. And, uh, uh, you know, to hear to, that there's some, there's always some shady shit going on, you know? So, but here let's talk about the U S state regulators are ill equipped to stop laboratory fraud. Hmm. Many analytical chemists, in the U.S. cannabis industry are fed up after years of telling state regulators that some laboratories falsely results to please their clients. We've heard this before, and we've talked about this on the show before. Uh, many cannabis testing laboratories that have been trying to do the right thing are going out of business. Said, Honest Labs say they are losing clients to bad actors who infl inflate THC concentrations and ignore mold and pesticides. If an honest lab fails, a product cult uh, cultivator's typical stop using that lab and find one that's willing to fudge the numbers some labs claim. Mm -hmm. Terrible, 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 terrible. The issues cover uh, the issues cover story is about the persuasiveness of the lab shopping problem in the U.S. cannabis industry. Some states are doing better, a better job than others overseeing cannabis testing labs and investigating reports of mislabeled and contaminated products. But every state with the legal cannabis market is dealing with an issue with the issue. Other countries are likely to face the problem too if they haven't already. The lack of enforcement of the cannabis testing in the U.S. should serve as a cautionary tale for other countries where cannabis is legal. Consumers deserve better. You might expect to get inferior cannabis laced with pesticides or mold in the illicit market, but most people, especially medical users who purchase cannabis in the U.S. state licensed dispensary, assume they are paying a premium. The cannabis that is regulated, tested, and safe. Can I just say something? Mm -hmm. People in the traditional market don't have problems with mold and, and don't use pesticides. 
at least the people I know, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, uh, in the absence of federal regulation of the cannabis industry, state regulators need to work together to solve the problem, and they need to be more transparent with uh, one another and the public. Each state collects data from cannabis testing labs in its jurisdiction, but those data uh, that data are publicly available, and scientists have had to fight to get bits and pieces of them with the help of Freedom of Information Act request. Searching for outliers in the data from just one state may not reveal practices such as THC inflation. If all the labs in the state are doing it to understand the natural distribution of THC in cannabis flower or trends in failure rates for mold contamination, regulators should have access to all testing data from all states, and they should hire people to comb through the data to look for suspicious results. And then they will know if the results in the state are out of line with the rest of the country. That's why you fight for home grow in your state and you learn to grow weed. Or you find somebody that's a home grower and you go in with them, help them buy their equipment, help with their plants, and then you split the booty. <laughs> then you don't have to worry about this remediated, pesticide, moldy, lying weed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> lying. That weed be lying. <laughs> laboratories that play by the rules are tired of waiting for regulatories. They should not have to take the matters in their own hands, but that's what they are doing. In California, two labs sued 13 others claiming they inflated THC percentages or failed to detect contaminants. The owner of one of the plaintiff labs says he and his family now face death threats. In this day and age, you can't even run a business without facing death threats in the, in the mm-hmm. cannabis industry because people want it to be legit. Other lab owners who have spoken out about contaminated cannabis say they too fear for their lives now, for protection, and ex-military friends to accompany them when they are in travel. That's fucked up. Hmm. Millions of people stand to benefit from clean, good quality cannabis. But before that can happen, the testing industry needs to clean up its act. Regulations should enforce good laboratory practices and randomly sample products being sold to consumers. Cannabis use already has a lot of stigma. We don't need to fake lab results making things worse. Great article. Hmm. Told the truth. Nothing but the truth Mm -hmm. on that one. Proactive cancer therapy trudges down the road to federal approval. Yes. Tell us about it, Ms. Weemayne. Yep. Data suggests that 2 million people will be diagnosed with cancer in 2024. There are multiple kinds of cancers, some more aggressive than others, and also various treatments. Chemotherapy pushes chemicals into the body that are said to kill the cancer cells, and it could trigger other issues. One treatment for postmenopausal breast cancer patients is aromatase inhibitors. Unfortunately, they often have debilitating side effects. Luckily, the City of Hope and biopharmaceutical research company kicked off a clinical trial to learn how cannabinoids might help. Cancer treatment side effects can be horrible for patients. Those going through chemotherapy are often exhausted, vomiting, and basically feel like they are benignly pumped with chemicals. Severe joint pain is common among postmenopausal women who have a certain type of breast cancer. This cancer uses estrogen to grow. Estrogen levels decrease during menopause. Therefore, these patients often develop severe joint pain. The pain can be so intense that many stop taking the medications. There is no current treatment for this type of response to aromatase inhibitors. That is why the biopharmaceutical research company developed a new potential drug made from cannabis. Cannabis-derived therapeutics are one of the most promising treatments to address undeserved pain conditions. They have developed a proprietary therapy with unique properties to address joint pain in breast cancer patients taking aromatase inhibitors, said George Hodgin, CEO and founder, in a press release. City of Hope is in phase two of the cannabis pharmaceutical clinical trial and celebrated the first patient receiving a dose last week. The placebo-controlled study aims to learn about joint pain efficacy, adverse effects, safety guidelines, and potential changes in physical function. Biopharmaceutical research company does not list which cannabinoids are used in their formulation. However, the trial is open about how much will be administered. Participating patients will receive 200 milligrams of BRC-001 
titrating up over two weeks as needed with a maximum dose of 800 milligrams. This research to alleviate or eliminate side effects such as joint pain is part of City of Hope's commitment to provide compassionate, individualized care. Lead investigator and City of Hope Professor Lisa Yi, MD, said in the release. We hope this work will yield innovative, FDA-approved therapies to help patients complete their life-saving treatments. The Phase two trial will face one more step before it is available to the public. In Phase three, researchers compare the potential treatment to standard treatments. Doctors currently prescribe over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications for pain. This clinical trial indicates that the research community is starting to take cannabis seriously as potential relief for this undeserved group of patients. Cannabis may hold the potential for many medical applications. Unfortunately, until the plant is rescheduled by the Food and Drug Administration, learning will continue at a snail's pace. Despite stalling on rescheduling, this clinical trial with a renowned cancer research team indicates that doctors are ready to figure it out now. Hell yeah. Yeah. Go weed. Yeah, how about it? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Political and state news, and if you like that up, I wouldn't be mad at you. I'll Mm. take a hit when you're ready. Okay. When you're ready. I'm ready. Illinois, the IDFPR adopts amendment for cannabis dispensary license processes. The Illinois Department of Financial Professional Regulations recently adopted amendments outlining uh, various aspects of the adult use cannabis dispensary licensing process. The new uh, subparts and sections to the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act, effective uh, August 20th, 2024, have undergone numerous changes since the first notice. Changes include establishment of fees and credential, uh, credentialing procedures for principal officers, agents, and agents in charge, licensing fees and renewals for dispensing organizations, uh, provisions for the DFPR to grant variances from its rules, parameters for unprofessional or unethical conduct, disciplinary procedures, and appeals of disciplinary actions. The fee for a two-year dispensing organization license is $60,000, <clears> with all licenses expiring on March 31st or even numbered even numbered years. The initial license fee may be prorated based on the number of months left in the next renewal period. License issued in March of an odd number year with 12 <laughs> months left until renewal will cost $30,000. Thirty grand to renew? That's fucking highway ro- robbery. And plus, on top of all the fucking taxes you already take, Illinois... And everybody else, all you fucking states that don't deserve this money anyway, shame on you, hmm. Illinois, $30,000 to renew. You're already fucking taking f- uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in tax re- mm-hmm. taxes from them. Fucking shame. Fees of $5,000 will be charged for late renewals. So now you're bumping it up to $35,000 if you're late. <laughs> and for changes of ownership or control. Hardship waivers reducing the licensing fee by 50% for the first renewal cycle only may be granted to dispensing organizations that meet the criteria for social equity applications. Individuals, family members, or residents of communities adversely impacted by past enforcement, health, and safety concerns, cannabis laws, and regulations, ID verifications, safe storage, inventory tracking, and other matters has also been added along with another subpart addressing changes in license for dispensing organizations, ownership changes, uh, reorganizations, and reallocations. Security requirements including signage, inventory control, destruction of cannabis and cannabis-infused products, and requirements for on-site consumption lodges have been added. Hmm. I know Also, about that. we heard that you can now have uh, outdoor... Consumption lounge attached to a dispensary, and possibly serving and food. food and food. Right, yeah, a kitchen too. It's a pretty you big can have deal. An outdoor consumption lounge. Mm-hmm. So it's coming along very slowly, and we know some people in the industry that have been fighting, helping promote that and get it cha- get the laws changed here and there. So good for you, Illinois. I'm good, thank you. Very tasty though. Missouri regulatories launched raids of nearly 50 stores looking for intoxicating hep edibles. Marijuana companies file opening appellate brief in case challenging federal prohibition. Marijuana companies have filed an appellate brief to challenge federal cannabis prohibition in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. 
They argue that Congress no longer aims to eradicate marijuana, citing the shift in state-level legalizations and reduced federal interference. The legal battle began after a lower court dismissed their case. Relaying on the, 20, 20, the 2005 Gonzalez v. Rock, Rock decision, the companies led by attorney David Boies hope higher courts will re, uh, reevaluate the constitutionality of the federal cannabis restrictions. Government responses is due by October 10th of this year. Residents question continued flyover raids by sheriff's offices now that cannabis is legal. In Greene County, Ohio, <laughs> residents are concerned about aggressive police raids and flyovers targeting cannabis growers despite the legalization of home grow cannabis. Those operations led by the local enforcement and state agencies aim to enforce compliance with Ohio new cannabis laws, which adult use to grow limited plants under certain conditions. However, property owners like Chris Thompson argued that the law enforcement lack clear guidelines leading to evasive tactics. <laughs> oh my God. Many, many are calling for clear regulations to prevent unnecessary confrontations. So that they're doing flybys for maybe like two plants on someone's back porch or a nice little garden they have. And they may have, I don't know, I think it's five plants or four plants in, in, in Ohio, whatever it is. They're doing fly, this county's doing flybys over people's homes because they're growing a couple plants. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Yeah. And that's taxpayer money being used. To do flyovers. Don't forget, they got to pay for those those pilots, and they got to pay for those cameras, and they got to pay for those planes, <laughs> and the fucking gas, just to fly over somebody's backyard. <laughs> Crazy. This is cool though. Texas Democrat smokes blunt and bong in pro weed campaign ad, just like nice. that that one uh, that one uh, person that was running in Louisiana that smoked a blunt mm -hmm. during their campaign mm -hmm. ad. A Democrat running for the Texas House of Representatives released a pro-marijuana campaign ad Monday that depicts the candidate smoking a blunt and a bong at the same time. <laughs> Come on, does it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they, 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 they did do both, though. Uh, In one commercial? Did it sound look wow. like I was doing something <laughs> yeah. really bad? <laughs> <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> I don't know. That, uh, that uh, DNA got me. Mm -hmm. The attention-grabbing ad called It's High Time for Change in Texas features the candidate Sally Duvall criticizing the state's confusing and unclear policies of marijuana use while appearing to use it herself. The shot opens with Duvall smoking a blunt, and the ad ends with her taking a huge bong rip and coughing afterwards. <laughs> well, keep on fighting. <laughs> Sally Duvall, tell us how to do it in Texas. They say all things are bigger in Texas. Well, show us how the weed should be grown in Texas then. That's right. Fight for it. Keep on fighting. Do more bong rips. But now <laughs> have some cojones and go to the state capitol where your probably office is at and have a bong on the table. And when someone comes in, go, would you like a bong rip? <laughs> <laughs> GOP and Democratic state senators back Florida's cannabis legalization initiative in a new ad ballot uh, where the vote looms. The two senators acknowledge that they don't agree on much or hardly anything to legalizing, though legalizing cannabis is something they both can get behind. But Ron DeSantis, who opposes legalization, said the initiative is the result of, a, of the company True Leave, which he is now calling it the weed cartel. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jeez. What is this? What is this, DeSantis? You actually have people coming across the table. Both. Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. saying, hey, we don't like you. You don't like me, but we do have one thing in common and it's good for the state. And that's cannabis. It's good sativa, for the people. And it's good for the people. That's more important. Right. And then you have also, though, because DeSantis is getting the old little <laughs> handout from the hemp companies. Mm hmm. That's why he's fighting it. He right. probably doesn't give a shit about the hemp companies either. Because if he was fucking smart, it's the same thing. Right. It's the same plant, DeSantis. Learn. Once you learn something. Okay? And I tell you what, it's not the weed cartel. They're legal growers in your state already for medical cannabis. They're, they own fucking 100 dispensaries in your state paying taxes. Millions of dollars coming to the state for the people. You're just, you're, you're a fool. A fool that's trying to fool us. You fucking kidding me? <laughs> U.S. court rules Delta 8 THC derived from hemp is 100% legal. That's two. Two now. Slamming the DEA, an embarrassing court case. That's two times they got slammed. 
Because they got slammed on Delta 9, right? Mm-hmm. The last episode or two episodes ago. Now, this time, if it's derived from hemp, it's 100% legal. The U.S. Ninth Circuit Court ruled that Delta 8 THC from hemp is legal and told the DA to shove it up your ass and take a hike <laughs> on their classification. That's exactly what they said. The court's ruling and its implications, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled that Delta 8 THC derived from legal hemp sources is not a controlled substance. The court found the DA's interpretation of the law was arbitrary and Capricious, I can't fucking say that word right right now, uh, and lacked a reasoned explanation. The hmm. ruling effectively removes Delta 8 THC from the DA's list of controlled substances, provided it is derived from hemp containing less than 0.3% Delta 9. The decision provides legal protection for businesses and consumers involved in Delta 8 THC products derived from legal hemp sources. Hmm. So all the states that are banning Delta 8 now should not because if it's coming from the hemp plant it is legal you get me out there all you states that are, that are banning it or trying to ban it don't make us come after you california lawmakers and advocates urged governor to sign bills to allow marijuana sales at state-run farmers markets and legalize cannabis cafes California lawmakers and advocates are urging Governor Gavin Newsom to sign two bills. One would permit marijuana use at state-run farmers markets, enabling small growers to sell directly to consumers. The second would legalize cannabis cafes, allowing marijuana to be consumed alongside food and drinks in public settings. Supports argue these measures will support small business and expand consumer access, while critics raise health concerns related to smoke exposure. Newsom has not yet committed to signing the bills, but Woody Harrelson pushes California governors to sign Cannabis Bill Cafe so that his dispensaries, like the one he owns, can serve food and drinks. Hmm. Idaho. We don't talk much about Idaho. Great state, though. Beautiful. If you never had a chance to go there, oh, my gosh. I got to go there one time, and it is gorgeous. The lakes and the mountains and the, the forestry, it's It's beautiful. But this group launches ballot initiative to decriminalize personal marijuana use. Kind of Idaho is pushing a petition to decriminalize personal marijuana use and home cultivation in Idaho for the 2026 ballot. Good for you, Idaho. Remember when we said back in the day that they would probably be the last of the last to do anything? Unlike previous attempts focused on medical marijuana, the initiative doesn't propose a resale market or state-run program. The goal is to allow residents to attain marijuana for personal use without legal consequences, improving safety by reducing policy interactions and making roads safer. The petition will debut at a Boise, Idaho pride before signature collection begin begins. Sweet. Love it. Let's go, Idaho. Michigan dispensary set monthly sales record in August. We just talked about July. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about August. Here in Illinois, we still haven't seen the numbers yet mm -hmm. for July or August. Medical, Not even we have. July yet? Nope. They're hiding them. Yeah, why? There's something fishy. <laughs> we haven't seen them yet. I'd like to know. Michigan licensed cannabis dispensaries are still seeing climbing in the growing retail market that set the monthly record of 295.4 million. They're almost at 300 million. Wow. And this was in August. For a month. For a month. According to the new data released September 11th by the state's cannabis regulatory agency, CRA, in August, Michigan's adult use flower sales represented 44%. Still king. Ba -ba 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 of retail revenue. While concentrates represented 19.6 of sales, vape cartridges 18.5% uh, uh, of sales, and infused edibles represented 9% of sales, according to CRA. I'm going to say something about the concentrate sales in Michigan. You got about 50% of the people going over there from, from here and probably from Ohio buying your really good concentrates because you got some fucking premium some good, yeah. concentrates, some hash coming out of fucking Michigan. So that's why your concentrates are above vape sales because <laughs> you get a vape anywhere. But good Good hash, hard to find. Mm -hmm. People go searching for that shit. So 
Democratic gubernatorial nominee lays out marijuana legalization plan. Indiana's Indiana's Indiana. Indiana. We just got to smoke some really good Indiana bubble gum. Mm-hmm. Uh, Demo- grown by our good friend Big Earl. Indiana Democratic gubernatorial nominee Jennifer McCormick has outlined a phased plan for cannabis legalization. Initially, she proposes establishing a medical marijuana industry with the goal of transitioning to full adult use legalization later. I'd move to Indiana if they fucking legal. We found a house in there that who what was that house that we saw in Indiana that was done by that cartoonist that you wanted to oh, buy? Oh, if that's still there. Oh my god, I'd move there. It and was it, kind of in the middle of who nowhere. Who cares? But. I was if they legalized cannabis, I would buy that product. Oh that god. house was fucking. It was amazing. like a hotel. It was kind of oh, like a- it's amazing. A hotel without a hotel. I'm not telling rooms. you. I'm not telling you where in <laughs> no, Indiana it's at. <laughs> but that house was. If was weed so cool. goes legal in Indiana, medical, I'm we're moving to yeah. that house. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna open up a dispensary. Oh, that was I, so cool. It's it's so beautiful there. That <laughs> property was amazing. I think it had like uh, 60 acres of land I don't, or I'll something. Fucking, too. Yeah. You, you can Sounds come pick good. weed off my property. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll grow it. Just come. Yeah. I. Oh my gosh. Just it's come a you it. pick cannabis farm. Yes. Just come and just come and do it. So here, McCormick, Jennifer McCormick. I I don't live in Indiana, but I support you because mm-hmm. you support weed. And if you do that, I will move to Indiana to have because here it's fucked up. You can't get anything here in Illinois anymore. But I will come to Indiana quick. McCormick believes legalizing cannabis could generate 172 million annually in tax revenue for the state, boosting the economy. Economy, even though Indiana, even though Indiana says they don't need the tax dollars because they're in the surplus, you still should then give that then do less taxes, give it back to the people. Okay, start a fund for the for the workers pension program. Do good things with it then. Uh, however, her opponent, Mike Braun, is skeptical about the plan passing the conservative dominated legislator. Go across the aisle, shake some hands, kiss some babies, give some hugs, do something, Indiana, because I want some Indiana bubble gum. And I want to move to that house in Indiana that we found because it's <laughs> fucking beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, when Trump and Harris agree on marijuana legalization, you know the issue has gone mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump and Kamala Harris now support marijuana legalization, yeah. signaling it's a shift to the main to a mainstream issue. So why Instagram? Since both candidates are talking about it, why can't you just let us be free on it? If your presidents are gonna say cool, mm-hmm. why aren't you cool, Instagram? You know, Trump's stance marks a reversal from his early anti-cannabis position, while Harris has evolved from opposition to advocacy. Public support for legalization has grown with 70 percent of the U.S. adults in favor. 70 hmm. percent are in favor of it. Probably 69 percent. Hey, what? what <laughs> says they probably smoke weed mm-hmm. out of that 70 percent. They want those votes. Right. There's a lot of us out there. Like I said, mm-hmm. remember I said if you start your own unit, it's a million of you eventually, maybe a million, two million, three million, five. That can change the world. A million people can change a fucking system. So the piece notes that bipartisan backing for reform and economic benefits from legal cannabis markets, both politicians see the issue as a way to appeal just for your vote. That's all it's for. Don't forget that. But if it federally legal decriminalizes it and takes it off all the scheduling and the, and you get your candidate to do that instead, to take it off altogether, game on, motherfuckers. <laughs> game motherfucking on. So if they want our vote, that's what has to happen. Yeah. So I don't know who I'm voting for because they're throwing the dangle in the carrot. And I'm blind as with a horse on marijuana, marijuana, marijuana. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. We should get something for this. They want our vote. Our vote matters. The How many smokers of cannabis in the United States? 100 million? Yeah. 144 million yeah. smokers? That changes the fucking game. Now, say 50 million smoke every day. Well, let's say... 10 million smoke every day and want to decriminalize, don't want to feel like they have to be fucking scrutinized and stigmatized and dictatized and pangatized and fucked up tized. Something tized. When they walk out of the house or they go into a restaurant and they smell like weed or they go walking past somebody, that, you want to earn our vote? Start talking real issues for us. Maybe you'll earn my vote. But here, Hmm. Biden faces growing pressure, though, to deliver on cannabis clemency promises. 
President Biden faces increasing pressure to fulfill the, his cannabis clemency promises as he nears the end of his term. It's fucking five months. He'll be gone. Out. See ya. Good. Go roll over instead of roll out. Time for you to retire. You know, good for you. Go smoke a joint. It's time. You spent 47 years in fucking government. I'm fucking, that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. <laughs> you know, 47 years of being on camera, being, I, I, fuck, I couldn't last fucking two seconds. You know, <laughs> your whole life is now exposed and you're getting brutally beaten up every day. Whew. That takes somebody fucking strong upstairs. Maybe that's why he's got fucking little, he's a little faded, <laughs> you know, because you got beat up for 47 years. Your mic can only take so much, you know. <laughs> Advocates urge Biden, though, to act, especially as 84% <laughs> of voters support clemency for nonviolent cannabis offenders. Time is running out for Biden to secure his legacy in criminal justice reform by addressing these cannabis-related imprisonments. Keep he, he that was part of his whole demeanor and his whole speech in his first year. His dad was, he was on the road talking about that mm -hmm. before when everybody voted for him. Mm -hmm. He was talking about cannabis reform. He was because talking about him votes. Right. But, but then now, he didn't do anything with not it. Not in three years. Nope. You get three and a half years now. You got a few months le left, baby. You need to fucking be good on your promise. Because mm -hmm. why should we give our votes to these, not dangling that carrot? Marijuana, marijuana, marijuana. You know, keep on dangling it. We keep on falling for it, just like Instagram. We're a bunch of suckers for the rest of our life. <laughs> this is the this is the dupe upon all fucking dupes. When I read this five, six days ago, I was fucking upset. Like, really upset. And I'm so glad you're reading it because I probably wouldn't want to read it because I want to fucking, like, re I'm really pissed off about it. Like, really pissed off. Like... I'm going to read it. Richard Nixon, everybody. Come, peace. <laughs> Admitted. What, Mrs. Weedman? What did he admit? Pot was not particularly dangerous. <sighs> uh, in newly uncovered audio, <laughs> former President Richard Nixon, who launched the war on drugs in 1971 that has had repercussions to this day, admitted he knew cannabis was not particularly dangerous. His admission during a meeting with a group of aides at the White House was recorded in March 1973 via his secret recording system. It was only recently made available after a lobbyist for the cannabis industry came across the conversation amid listening through hours of tapes, the New York Times reports. Let me say, I know nothing about marijuana, he said. I know that it's not particularly dangerous. In other words... Say that again. It is not particularly dangerous. In other words, and most of the kids are for legalizing it. But on the other hand, it's the wrong signal at this time. Though he publicly argued that drug abuse was public enemy number one, he privately questioned during the meeting the extreme punishments Americans were subjected to for marijuana crimes. Penalties should be in line with the crime, Nixon said during that Oval Office conversation, noting a 30-year sentence in a cannabis case he recently learned about and added, the penalties are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. We've been duped. We they, owe, we're owed, all of us are owed $1 trillion for the war on drugs, and everybody that has been in jail for cannabis is owed a gratitude of thanks and, and everything. They, they, this is fucking, and we stand for this shit. Go ahead. Sorry, Ms. There should be an evaluation of penalties on it, and there should not be penalties like in Texas that people get 10 years for marijuana. That's wrong, Nixon said. Despite Nixon's reservations over the harsh criminalization for marijuana, he instituted the federal government's drug classification system, and he designated marijuana among the substances believed to be the most abused and deemed as having no proven medical value. Since then, its categorization has led to mass incarceration, disproportionately affecting black and brown people who are 3.6 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession per analysis conducted by the American Civil Liberties Union.
Nixon's decision also hampered progress on research over the therapeutic potential of marijuana through the last five decades. Nixon's newly discovered remarks come as the federal government is reconsidering marijuana's placement as a restricted Schedule One drug, a category which includes heroin and LSD. It shouldn't even yeah. be on a schedule. After right. reading this, it shouldn't even be on any schedule. It should right. be off. Done. In May, the Department of Justice said that the attorney general was circulating a proposal to reclassify marijuana from Schedule One to Schedule Three. The Drug Enforcement Agency has scheduled a public hearing on December 2nd after the presidential election to consider various viewpoints on the proposal. Meanwhile, both primary presidential candidates have appeared to advocate for loosening cannabis policies. In an interview with Rolling Stone published in June, prior to Kamala Harris becoming the Democratic presidential nominee, the vice president discussed her comments that marijuana should not be a Schedule One drug. I stepped on a couple of toes when I made that public statement. Can we move on this? Do the analysis on the drug schedule, move it, and change it, she said. Though Donald Trump appointed a slew of anti-pot crusaders to his cabinet, last month he acknowledged that a ballot measure that would legalize recreational cannabis in Florida appeared inevitable. Without quite endorsing it, he suggested he supported the decriminalization of weed. Someone should not be a criminal in Florida when this is legal in so many other states, he wrote on his social media platform. We do not need to ruin lives and waste taxpayer dollars arresting adults with personal amounts of weed on them, and no one should grieve a loved one because they died from fentanyl-laced marijuana. Tricky dicky. So, yeah. Tricky dicky. I cannot tell a lie to the American people. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> it's not so can. dangerous. Yeah. Oh my God. Crazy. <sighs> when I read that article, yeah. I was so mad, so <laughs> angry. You don't even know how angry I was. And that's why I gave it to you <laughs> when I was putting the episode together last night. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 this is all for nothing. All for nothing. All you had to do was just say, as a president, a leader of the country, you knew it was the right thing to do. You could have said, marijuana is not as dangerous as we all thought. We are going to take it off. We're going to put it under medical. But, but couldn't any president do that now? Af- of course, it's, but you would. But you would have got. He right. would have gone to Congress. He would have gone to the right. Senate. He would have had to fucking do a lot of different things to get it approved altogether. But I mean, he got the war on drugs approved. Mm-hmm. If he would have spoke highly of marijuana and had research on it, had research back scientists going, oh, yeah. this is not dangerous. Let's sit down and figure out how we can make this legal. And there's a crop in the United States. And we would have had, instead of 1970 to today, over f- how many years of the war on drugs since 1937, 86 years left now. But all of that, all the wasted they money, ruined all the anyway. wasted resources, whatever, we could have fucking studied it and tested and shown we could have had one of the greatest stories of cannabis in a lifetime. And every country around the world would have had it legal because everybody follows the United States. And then the who fucking whatever. It's just terrible. Terrible that we have to read this now. And we as the American people. And around the world, because it's the United States' fault that fucking every every country is against cannabis. And now you see some countries are legalizing because they know we fucked up. They're not listening to us anymore. Because we fucking sold the human human beings something that was good. A mm-hmm. good crop. We've been lied, duped, cheated, stole, hornswoggled, bamboozled by our so-called leaders. Pew. Marijuana, marijuana, marijuana. Dangling that carrot. More international news. More than $3 billion at stake. How regulatory red tape is holding back Australia's cannabis legalization. Patients in Australia most grew the Therapeutic Goods Association to access cannabis with the majority of products being imported. The biggest challenge for local cultivators in Australia is the stringent regulatory framework. The illegal cannabis trade vastly outpaces the legal market where prices remain uh, prohibitively high according to local sources. New studies back full legalization in the Czech Republic. A new study suggests that legalization cannabis in the Czech Republic could generate significant social benefits, potentially up to $5.5 billion annually. The findings highlight in the economic public health and criminal justice improvement the full legalization could bring, particularly through tax revenues and savings from reduced law enforcement costs. Advocates believe that they strictly regulate market with consumer protections in place similar to models in Canada or some, some United States states could enhance public safety and the quality of cannabis products available to users. Man, other countries are going to be hiring growers from here, bringing them over there for for lots of money. 
Uh, Italian lower house bans hemp products, a.k.a. cannabis light, sparking controversy and industry outrage. Italy faces backlash over new law banning low temp, lo, low THC hemp flour, with critics like uh, likening the move to banning everyday herbs. Opposition parties warn the ban strengthens illegal markets and undermines legitimate businesses in Italy's hemp industry. Experts highlight the potential loss of 11,000 jobs and the law's possible violation of European Union competition regulations. Pakistan Senate Committee approves first ever cannabis regulation bill. Pakistan Senate uh, Committee has approved the country's first ever cannabis regulation bill, aiming to oversee the cultivation and production of cannabis. The legalization process is creating a cannabis control and regulatory authority to manage cannabis policy issue and issue licenses and ensure quality control. It targets the medical cannabis sector and products with less than 0.3% THC with strict penalties for non-compliance. The bill must still pass Parliament before becoming law. The economic potential is projected between $4 billion and $6 billion annually. That's crazy. See? what? It's a good crop. We just talked about $5 billion for, for the checks. Mm-hmm. We're just now talking about Pakistan. Morocco just did it. Pakistani and hash is fucking phenomenal. You know? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you what. This is a good crop for all. Not for the government, because as we know, we, we just talked about, for the people. For the people! <laughs> you know? Senate Finance Committee Chairman Salim Madhuwali remarked on the increasing use of cannabis in Pakistan on Friday, last Friday, stating, everyone in this country is consuming hashish. <laughs> <laughs> Colombia's Diverse environments grow marijuana with uncommon terpenes that can have unique therapeutic benefits, this study shows. A new study highlights the unique therapeutic potential of Colombian-grown cannabis due to its diverse environmental conditions, which foster the production of a rare terpene and cannabinoids. Research identified four distinct cannabis chemotypes across Colombia, the varying levels of THC, CBD, and other compounds depending on the region. These variations could enhance uh, resistance to pests and lead to development of novel (coughs) medical cannabis products. The study emphasizes Colombia's role in shaping the future of global cannabis cultivation. I was also reading more in this article. They were talking about like like all these other cannabinoids and listing them out and like what kind of percentages they're getting in plants now and what kind of terpenes that we don't see a lot here. I've heard of these terpenes, but don't see a lot in the flower here and how these terpenes are so pronounced and helping medical patients. They're like, they got good soil though in Colombia. I mean, come on, they grow cocoa there too. So, I mean, they mm-hmm. grow the coke plant, the, co- the cocoa plant, you know, they grow a lot of good stuff. Colombia's mm-hmm. soil is coffee. rich. Coffee. Yeah, Colombia. Mm, good mm-hmm. Col- cup of Colombian coffee. Can't beat it. Their soil is rich. So, one day I hope to go to Colombia and I heard I it's great. Love, I, I heard it's great down Bogota. there and smoke some good Colombian. We, we, I've never done cocaine before, but when in Colombia, why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Right? It's there. It's fresh. <laughs> I'm just I'm kidding. Maybe. It's fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been fucking in bales sitting in the fucking Atlantic Ocean for months floating to the <laughs> keys. <laughs> They're seasoned. Yeah, right. So uh Snoop Dogg. Yeah, back in action. Right? Yep. The Olympics. Now he's being tested on his blunt rolling skills. Yep. Tell us about him as we man. Yep. His skills were challenged by Kai CNET, but he blew it out of the water. According to people online, Snoop Dogg is the unofficial patron saint of marijuana. Although the gin and juice rapper has pretended to give up the sticky icky for a marketing campaign and even volunteered to temporarily turn his back on it for the 2024 Summer Olympics, Snoop Dogg and Mary Jane will never truly part. Streamer Kai Sinat, CNET, I hope I'm not saying that all wrong what uh wanted to test the validity of these claims in a video recorded backstage at the 2024 vmas kai challenged snoop dog to see how quickly he could roll a blunt snoop how fast can you roll a blunt asked kai without hesitation snoop replied before the song ends the song in <laughs> question was shirley murdoch's beloved 1985 single as we lay Although neither opted to begin an official timer, sure enough, before the ballad could end, Snoop completed the mission. Back in 2019, Snoop Dogg revealed that he actually hired a full-time blunt roller. According to him, she's already rolled about half a million joints during her tenure. (laughs) 
But don't get it twisted. With Snoop catching his first high in the 1970s and maintaining a habit, on average 81 blunts a day, he proved to Kai that he is never to be questioned again. He is the OG. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, Ms. Wee Man, how you feeling? I'm feeling like I'm going to have some more of I that. Know. I like it. I would like to thank Redemption Botanicals, mm -hmm. our new friends. We appreciate you for donating to the cause, giving us this great DNA cake. Going to be out here in stores. Check them out in uh, the week of the 30th and er of September and early October. Check them out. Find them at your local dispensary or ask your bud tenders and bud tenders. Get ready to get some samples of some good weed. You're all going to like it. So thanks, Redemption Botanicals, for uh, taking care of us. Ms. Weed Man. Mr. Weedman. That's the end of the show. Yeah. Have a good week, everybody. Easing out of summer and just flowing into fall. Mm. Enjoy it. Enjoy the fall. Enjoy, Enjoy the nice nice weather that we've been having though right now. This weather's been exceptional. Hope you all enjoy it out there. I'm just we blowing it up over here. <laughs> <laughs> everybody out the world, we love you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the support. Hopefully we'll see you on the trail soon. Uh, as Polly always says, smoke smart, puff puff and away. Puff puff pass. Check out our cannabis lifestyle brand online at 8decades.com. Our custom smokes and accessories are perfect for your coffee table, bedroom nightstand, or kitchen counter. They're designed for you to show them off. The Canna community is also loving our hemp and cotton blend t-shirts, sweatshirts, scarves, and hats. Finished off with our 8 Decades logo. We've got some awesome long-lasting goods that will be your favorite for years to come. Eight decades, because a ninth decade of cannabis prohibition isn't acceptable.